grand final. Klukas, who's been very good in the clinches, to McGrath, who's just been outstanding. He got a hand pass away to Gilmore and then to Jones. Short pass out wide. Theo Adams was outbodied but then had managed to get his right boot into it. Cousins, however, for Clermont to Walton and now Trevor Scott. The hand pass at the feet of Dwight needs to do better. He goes back, back in after it again and Jackson Crabb, they went over the top of him, the whistle has gone and umpire Fussell will ball it up close to the boundary line. And just a couple of quick things early on, Anthony Jones has gone to full forward, Brad Dodd who's supposed to Shane Tapur Mantamere is playing deep in the full forward line trying to keep Tipper away from where the action is at half back. Trevor Scott third man up, well he won the knock but it went straight to Murphy, he kicks over centre wing. Matson again fends an opponent off then hand passes to the ground that tackle lingered and Tommy Matson will get the free kick Kyle Hams the offender Matson concedes a little bit of ground he finds Trent Carroll some of the defenders have had some pretty big stats Doro which is not always a good sign or no. really a good sign short pass to Trinity Hanley that's had a pretty good finals round has Hanley is it set a half back favouring the southern side of the ground. Quinn the target, and he did well. Sandwiched between two pretty big bulldogs there. One of them, Toby McGraw, and the other one, I think, was Ryan Murphy. It was. So strong mark to Quinn. Just above him is his digitally enhanced image on the scoreboard. Which shows that the Tigers lead, trail rather by 24 points. Goes forward. Anthony Jones didn't expect it to carry to him couldn't complete the mark and there are stacks on the mill umpire Farmer the umpire of the year will come in and ball it up right half forward flank for the Tigers Jackson Crabb last man up can you do something here the skipper to inspire his team in the final half there is no tomorrow for these two teams Hey, lovely palm down to Klukas hand passes to no one in particular Walton goes to ground, that's dangerous he tried to tunnel it out between his legs didn't really make good contact, this is Scott gets a deft little shepherd from Carlin and then makes a horrible mess of it kicks it out of bounds on the full just a bit slow to get uh, boot to ball then so uh, South get a, a bit of a, a lucky breakdown in that uh, deep back in the back pocket Adam Hayde will be to restart play Ruckman creeps infield and goes to the top of the defensive goal square. Murphy with a bounce, plays on immediately, then flirts with the boundary line out here on the northern flank. It pitches just wide of Toby McGrath for a throw in. It's a bit ambitious doing that. Philly didn't, you know, probably could have bided his time and just waited a fraction longer. Eventually something would have been able to uh, present up and maintain possession but you give Clem on a chance again now Quinn comes in in front of both uh, Ruckman there Hay and Scott going to ground in there for the Tigers was Carlin Quinn hand pass to Jones can't get away from Gilmore he does in the end snaps on goals won't have the carry to poor Amanda Mary a fist and then follows up on the deck Tipper with a left foot kick out wide great kick it was a great kick Roger Hayden didn't have to break stride he had Jones running outside him he may use him now, he does in fact, that won't be 15 metres, Jones has got a play on, goes short, that's 15, and the mark paid to Adams on the southern wing. So Theo Adams kicks up toward the half forward line, Hewitt in front, Warren from behind affected enough with the spoil, here's a chance for Ashton Hams, tackled immediately, took possession, but somehow he's able to palm the ball off to Theo Adams who goes with the long kick, Cornell out of position, and Tuvi has had a very good season, takes the mark, Goes looking there for Trevor Scott. Over the top of him was Hay. Fisted the ball to the ground. Galt and Crab have played on each other throughout. Crab prevails. Got a hand pass away to Nimmo. Goes to a man unattended on centre wing. That's Cousins. He'll get a shepherd there from Quinn. Well, in the end, he didn't, didn't need it. Cousins goes up towards Crawford. Not enough desperation in his attack on the footy. Going to ground, Jamie Graham. Hand pass to North. Further afield now to Tapu Amanda Mary. There was a free kick off against uh, Claremont to North, but they had the advantage south from Adel. It ends up with Gilmore. Long raking kick to centre half forward meant for Hewitt but Michael Warren did well. Injured warrior this afternoon. Feeds the hand pass off to Crab into the middle Dodd. Matson, who's had a lot of it. 
just lively, gets around his opponent. Got a bounce. Home. He's got no one really to kick to, so he's forced to go out very wide. Dwyer a half volley, awkward one. He has McGrath to beat, can't do that. McGrath, brilliant, dispossesses his opponent, feeds a hand pass to Jones. Now Hams of the Ashton variety. And to poor Amanda Mary is away on centre wing, floats the ball up toward the half forward line. It's an awkward one, Swift defends pretty well, but Crawford's there for South Fremantle. He goes along the boundary line and Cornell, well he let it slip straight through his hands and it's gone over the line out of bounds as we go to Todd Ridley who's got the Clemont bench. Yeah thanks Phil, we've got uh, Leon Wilson, Jack Regan, Tony Delaney and Aaron Jarvis starting on. Well, your boy Tipper's doing a little bit at the start of this third quarter but I still reckon he's a long way behind Toby McGrath at the moment. S Scott wins it down, Cousins under pressure to Nimmo, to Walton, that's Tackle. holding the ball. Yes, it'll be a free kick there to South Fremantle. Walton had one arm pinned there just after he got the footy. No way he could legally dispose of it. And Cornell to line up for his third of the Ooh, afternoon. The tackle was that high first initially. One, that first one over, just albeit for a brief second right on the shoulder. But uh, the umpire of the year knows best. While he's lining up, Rod, who's on the Bulldogs bench? Yeah, we've got Ryan Webb on the bench at the moment. He might have a little problem with his uh, hamstrings or his quad. Uh, Ray Smithers, Kieran Eugle, and also Craig White. Mitch Cornell, a quarter of a century after his father had a, a premiership medallion draped around his neck here at Subiaco Oval. Lines up for his third. A rather ungainly looking approach and an ungainly finish. That is shocking play by South Fremantle. There were three Claremont defenders lining the goal line. Not one South Fremantle player. Scott has gone short. Shunted down off his kick then is Regan. Comes towards the members' wing. Ends up with McGrath. 80 metres out. Spears it deep into the pocket in front. Adams good mark. Great hands. Gee, that was poor though by South Fremantle a moment ago. A player taking a shot from 50 metres out. They had no one. They're just expecting it to sail over the goal line. It's amazing. Mitch Cornell Glenny's shot was a, a lot closer than that long goal. He did kick in the first quarter, but uh, yeah, Adam's hands were sensational in that effort. Great kick by Toby McGrath. He's had a great game, this young man, and he'll cap it off if he can happen to kick his third goal. Yep, Cornell failed at his attempt for a third. What can Adams do? His two previous goals have come at this end of the ground in the opening quarter. He has 18 for the season. Very deliberate approach and a very good finish. South Fremantle lead the 2005 Grand Final by five goals. Well, it's the first score, isn't it? Well, certainly, certainly the first major in this third quarter. And it came after a bizarre incident with Mitch Cornell and having nobody on the goal line. But the man of the moment... That's a great kick advantage him. Simon Nimmo was close enough. There was not a lot he could do any more than he did. And Theo Adams' hands were as strong as anything. And uh, he's he got an ungainly kick, hasn't he, Phil? But uh, the result is very, very effective. Not unlike one he kicked in the first quarter from the same pocket. Probably that one was a little bit more acute as far as the angle goes. But he has been a wonderful contributor to uh, South Fremantle's cause this year. And again on the day that counts the most. So back in the middle of the ground, high opposed to Quinn. Such an important clearance, this one for Claremont. They need to start making up for lost ground right now, but it's palmed down by Hay to Klukas. McGrath gets a hand pass to Clint Jones. Now to Gold, who had nowhere to go, so he feeds it back to Jones. Quinn missed him, fortunately, as Crab now takes possession. Runs out to open spaces on centre wing, but it's going forward. It's the problem for, for Claremont. Eventually, he just kicks to a contest. Luckily yeah, for Claremont, against David Galt, Crabb was flattened after he kicked the footy, and Handley will take the relayed free kick at right half forward, but still he's too far out to score. Trinity Handley runs to about 55 metres, goes with a long kick, a pretty good-looking one, marked by Morton! So, perhaps a very badly needed goal to Claremont, it wasn't a convincing way to take it forward. Morton is going to have to be set on his angle. He just uh, tried to get on with it quickly, but already umpire Farmer was setting the angle for him. So he's going to have to go around, and he'll be almost... He'll be a couple of metres in from the boundary line when he sets himself, I would imagine. He's a very, very good mark, isn't he, Mitch Morton, for somebody his, his size. He's not overly tall. A great talent. Yep. He's not a bad time to be on the West Coast Eagles list. He's yes. only 18, had a great, great year in the under-18s last year. 
So that's a fairly generous angle, I would suggest, as Morton comes in, uses the drop punt, and he makes no mistake, so a badly needed one for the Tigers. They're still in this contest. The margin comes back to 24 points, as it was at half-time. Well, the captain owes his teammates one now, David Galt. Uh, I suppose just through overuse of the footy, but on, on the screen, great mark, good jump. Really didn't have anybody to contend with Ryan Murphy down there wrestling with his direct opponent, Trevor Scott. So, David Galt, they just didn't clear the ball in the middle of the ground, Phil, and he got pretty angry. Chase Jackson crab down, had no reason to belt him after he kicked the footy, and a resultant goal was it. Mitch Morton doesn't need a reason. Mitch Morton played three games this year with West Coast. Troy Carlin is sneaking forward unopposed for Claremont at the moment on the left half forward flank but the ball's going the other way Hay wins it down but it will eventually go in Claremont's direction with Cousins gathering it hooks it high and wide to the southern wing Dodd gets a good bounce crashes through with the footy no one wants to go in and tackle him he goes towards Jones couldn't take the mark what's his recovery like pretty good hand passes off to Handley 45 metres out unguarded goal square bounces beyond it and it'll be a boundary throw in not a bad result well, I thought oh, that hit the behind oh, post. It did. Well, unless it, unless it crossed the line first, which is hard to imagine. It's been signalled as a score. I thought that hit the post and would have been a boundary throw-in. Well, we'll put Getting it in a replay a of behind. it here. There goes the ball. Well, that is a bad decision by the umpire. Darfield. I was going to say not a bad result because it wouldn't give South Mantle possession, but in actual fact the error has put the ball into South's possession. Toby McGrath kicks the ball over the pack. Walton goes to ground. Klukas just shoveled the ball clear. That's all he had to do. Theo Adams was there. Creative hand pass to Crawford, who's been very good. He goes with a driving kick up towards centre half forward. No mark taken by Hewitt, but they've got support. Cornell, the hand pass swatted down. Cousins courageous as always. Somehow got it away to Turvey. And Alan Turvey sends a floater up towards centre wing and Trevor Scott has taken the mark on his chest so Claremont going forward again the kick not a good one from Scott Leon Wilson makes the most of it and feeds the hand pass to Walton sidestep might have been tripped he was so just forward of centre hand pass to Matson, who's been one of the Tigers very best not a good kick Jones under pressure he'll get a free kick for that Jamie Graham well it was one of those touch and go ones and unfortunately applied too much of the touch certainly did Phil and look Clem on aren't going to lie down the boys said on the boundary line that they're committed they committed as a team they respect and love their coach so they're not going to go down if they are going to go down they're going to go down fighting right to the end and uh, this lead is not insurmountable oh, it's far away from that yet yeah, they're within four kicks four straight kicks would do it Jones a long kick going for extra distance he pushes it across his body and it's gone through for another minor score the positive for the Tigers is Doro, they're winning a lot more of the contested ball right at the moment. They sure are. See if they're just taking their foot off the pedal temporarily. Luke Dwyer on the interchange at the moment, the former East Perth player. John Dimmer on the phone. As Hayden marks the restarting kick, bounces it beyond the defensive 50, hugs the boundary line and finds Jones. Fremont have eaked two points off the half-time deficit which stood at 24 Jones with a left footer which clears the wing on the northern side big pack in front was Hayden couldn't take the mark deft hands there by Kyle Hams and strength by Adams gets tackled by Nimmo as he kicks it inside 50 on the stretch at the back Tuvi Cornell sweating on him Cornell wins the day snaps on goal what go through great solo effort Mitch Cornell gets his third, and that was a terrific piece of individual football, and South Fremantle back out to a 28-point buffer. Well, Philip, that's a great effort at ground level from a big fella. Theo Adams' bulk, just in strength, got him through there. Unfortunate for Tuvi, the ball went behind. Cornell harassed him. Tuvi just got turned inside out, and that's a great goal. There's no doubt about that couldn't kick one from 45 metres before and he kicks the most difficult one so brings up goal number three and has been a great acquisition to this side from the second semi-final team of a fortnight ago. Yes he didn't play in that match Doro. No and he's he hasn't rucked so he's been a very valuable player up forward today. Hayes been a good ruckman opposed to Quinn he just got a hand to it great desperation from Toby McGrath still he's in there so too Cousins Klukas as well. Free and kick against Matthew Klukas I think you'll find Phil so Claremont he's last effort 
The umpire did signal over the shoulder. Oh, actually, he's giving it to Matthew Klukas. Well, he seemed to be the aggressor. I thought he was too, <laughs> watching it from where we are. Pays to be aggressive as he plays on from behind the centre circle. That's a beautifully directed kick. Onto the chest of Hams. Now, that was obviously just a mistake on behalf of Wilson. So, Ashton Hams onto the left boot. Beautiful pass. Hewitt took a couple of grabs. It was a beautiful kick. And Evan Hewitt has marked the ball about 49 metres out from goal, but directly in front. As we have a look at a replay of that uh, high tackle, and we might get a better... Well, there it is. That was a pretty that obvious one. one. Yeah. Look, he's had a tough day at the office, Evan Hewitt. He hasn't stopped presenting up, and I reckon that's probably one of the rare times, Phil, that he was able to run through the football. I reckon I could count six or eight that he's had to stop and get smashed by a defender. Both centre-half forwards today have struggled, Doro, haven't they? Anthony Jones at the other end. Evan Hewitt hasn't had it all his way from 53 metres. A high kick from Hewitt. And it's been marked on the goal line by Trent Carroll. Where's the tall timber? Claremont have got numbers well, down Cornell there. Well, was there. He was just out of position. So Trent Carroll into the pocket. Emerging from the shadows now. Quinn's hand pass sends Cousins away. Seeming to have plenty of legs. They're going to need them, the Tigers. They've got a deficit to make up. Dodd back to Cousins, still running. Kicks the ball, continuing down centre wing, the southern side of the ground. Now Wilson with a bit of pace. Couple of bounces, make that three. He gets to the half forward flank and goes long on goal. Jones is down there again, but again Graham. Jamie Graham in the aerial contest has just been the master at critical occasions this afternoon. And another behind to the Tigers. Toby As we McGrath. see Toby McGrath, yeah, Glenn having a rest. On the bench, the poor man of Mary marks the Murphy kick. One bounce, he'll take a second as he streams up towards the halfback flank. Now he starts to run infield, loops a hand pass to an unguarded Hayden North. Dances around both uh, Morton and Jones. With Jones of Claremont, he hand passed to Jones, his teammate, who gives it off to Graham. He kicks towards half forward. Fist in there by Toovey, but hitting it at full tilt, chest on is Hayden. Kicks wide out towards the pocket. Nimmo out there. Boundary line might be his best friend. He should have gone that way. He's gone back over his head. Adams great oh, it again. It's the Theo Adams pocket. Four goals to Adams. And maybe putting a potential nail in the Tigers' coffin. The lead now is 33 points. Goodness gracious. Could he win the Simpson medal? Yes. Uh, well, there's no doubt that he can. Like, he certainly kicked enough goals. Simon Nimmo. Oh, sometimes it's dangerous to keep the ball alive in the corridor. It was the bad option, wasn't it? Yeah, look, you just got to keep... If he had to hit the ball 20 metres down the boundary line, let it run out end over end, get your breath back, have a boundary throw in, but he wanted to keep it alive. He got a call somewhere from someone, Phil. But Theo Adams again on the end of the queue. Goal number four. Having a memorable grand final, Theo Adams, Quinn. Wins the tap down to Trent Carroll, who's been moved into the centre square to perhaps provide a bit of momentum there. The kick misses its target to poor Amanda Mary. Brilliant with the falling hand pass to Hay. Slick hand pass to the run of Hayden North. Straight down the corridor. Oh. Now they've got some confidence going. Hewitt that on the lead. Bullet-like pass. Umpire Bandy is it who's come in to officiate, and Hewitt is down. Who's perhaps to stay, but also Brad, Brad Dodd. Dodd. As we see in replay, there's one. And Dodd has hurt his leg, perhaps. He came down awkwardly. Well, it's interesting. The first one, Trent Carroll again, with a, not involved the in the initial contest. That one was an accident, I think, the second one with Brad oh, Dodd. Sorry. Yeah. But Trent Carroll not involved in the initial play. He's in a bit of trouble, Evan Hewitt. Got one right in the scone. Yes, it looked to be to, to the left side of the jaw. Brad Dodd is up and seems to be OK. But it's Evan Hewitt. He may not even remember he's taken the mark, John. No, he looks a bit shaky. He's a big fella. He's up on his feet now, but it might take him a while to regain his composure. As Prescott is trying everything down there, he's shuffling his players around. Hollywood been... Scott's come off. David Campbell's come back on going forward. So he is trying everything, uh, Ashley Prescott. What's the umpire doing? Glenn, who's actually sending Brad off Brad Dodd. The old red card. Well, 
it seems to only happen in finals to Pool Man Amiri is coming across to Dodd and that is something that he should try and avoid if he can the umpire the emergency umpire has just told him well, to make some mistakes because he's been reported earlier in the game oh, Brad okay. Dodd has been reported for the second time but not for that incident, incident with Graham sure. well I reckon that's why he's been set off he's I reckon it was an accident twice. Trent Carroll went in there and, and it's 50 metres so this is a gimme goal Hewitt who marked the ball inside. just out was it inside was it on or inside I, well, I can't well, remember gonna, now we'll, we'll, we'll soon him. find out because the uh, the umpire Bandy is going to well he's backpedalling at the moment there's Brad Dodd in the dugout he is much admonished at the moment as we see in replay certainly a high contact there from Carroll maybe the umpire got it wrong and thought Dodd was the instigator of that well uh, there was gee, I don't, well, there wasn't much contact there perhaps Dodd intended more contact there was a little bit but I'm not sure that you know he could have done a lot worse Brad Dodd if he chose to in that situation well put this down the man should. on the mark we'll put this one down the man on the mark is right on the edge of the 10 meter square Hewitt will kick from about 15 meters out straight in front and hit the post well he is still a little bit rattled Evan Hewitt he's got the staggers I can tell you Jackson Crab, Ryan Webb the and there's a lot of feeling in this grand final Crab gets pushed out of the pack now it's on oh this is getting ugly we're seeing some fisticuffs here players from both sides running from the opposite end of the There's ground, Dory, you just don't see thrown. this much anymore. The crowd are getting right involved. Well, tippers in there, but just get on with the footy. The umpire South should Mandel either bounce the ball. have got everything to lose and nothing to gain. As we see a shake at Evan Hewitt coming off the ground, but diagonally across and the left full forward blocking in the on. shadows that the players have almost reached the fence with let the him kick cups. the ball in Phil and then it'll soon stop Claremont will get a goal out of this well Toby's been smart. told to kick the ball in immediately and he's done that he's kicked it deep into the pocket and running it out there is Regan with a bounce he kicks up towards half forward and Crawford is still fighting back at right full back Regan with the footy now kicks it back towards Swift traps it on the half volley all of a sudden Claremont are going to find people up forward Swift runs in a circle then kicks out wide and Regan in the link in the chain again Meanwhile, the uh, fracas has finally abated down at right fullback as far as Claremont are concerned. Regan goes short, grab the target. What's going to happen here? Got to go back around the mark, I think, Glenn. Or has mark to come back. here. Now, I hope that fight didn't start because of a bad umpiring decision, but we'll see, I suppose. Well, even if it did, that's no excuse. Now, hang on. The goal umpire is coming out to speak to Greg Bandy, the field umpire, 70 metres behind play. I'm not too sure what has transpired. The flag hasn't been waved for the behind. That is maybe what's happened, I think. They're going to start all over the, again the by ball the look of it. is going to have to go back to be kicked in because with the fracas starting, the behind hadn't been waved. Where's the kick going to be taken from? From it's full back, I would think. Well, I don't think so. No, it'll be centre-half back now. Well, that would indicate that there has been another free kick or a report given with the, uh, the Claremont Club taking it from the defensive edge of the centre square. Regan's gone to Swift, two bounces, gets around a lunging Klukas, hand pass to Matson, back to Swift, runs into the poor Amanda Merry, Matson on the end of it again, hand passes out wide, chance for Jarvis right down from the full back line, shoots and a behind. Well done back there by Jamie Graham, swatting it through for a force behind. There's a bit going on between Ryan Webb and Trent Carroll Glidden. I don't know whether Ryan Webb got himself in trouble. I think the runner's uh, telling Trent to get away and just relax. There's still 35 minutes of footy to go and the game is not over. Duffield's kicking has been a feature of his game. He finds Hayden casually as is his style from right half back. Chips the ball into dispute. Quinn puts a fist into it. Not good work there by Hayden. Morton ran at the ball courageously gets a hand pass off to Crabb he shrugs one tackle now kicks from deep in the left foot foot pocket hits the post well that would have been a lifting goal that would have lifted the spirits of the Tigers but you can tell by their body language Dora that they're still right in this fighting hard the Tigers although they travel by trail rather by 22 points 23 and three quarter minutes into the third term well you don't can condone fighting or anything like that on the ground but the bottom line is one in all in you've got to protect your mates you don't walk away if somebody's getting attacked by two or three players. Duffield short to Graham 
Graham now will chip it along the boundary line. The mark taken by Eugle in space. Still inside the Bulldogs' defensive 50. It'll be a reasonably long quarter. As the kick now goes to North. Got one 50. in the back of the head there from Carlin. Does the umpire will want to impose his will here, and he does. Just to make sure that nothing bubbles Ooh. over. And uh, perhaps in other... You know, that is, I'm going to say in other circumstances, you might have seen a penalty, but on the replay, it certainly deserved it. It's a pretty cheap shot by Troy Carlin. And not surprisingly, Hayden North's being marched right down to the outer wing to take his kick. Well, I probably remember way back to 81, Glenn, when these two did play in the grand final. It was a pretty physical encounter. Basil Campbell yeah, inside think, the first minute. I, well, know, I, I, can't first remember, I can't remember what South kicked in the second quarter. I think it was two goals, 13 or something. And it got belted in the end. North out wide, the mark taken by Eugel. Aaron Eugle comes backwards to Duffield. It's almost like South Man, I'm just trying to slow it down to regain some composure here. There's Duffield from the left wing. Kicks up towards centre half foot through the hands of Morton. At the back, Quinn. His kick partially blanketed there by Kyle Hams. In goes Carroll, head down, did well. Feeds the hand pass to Delaney. He'll link up with Swift. He's a robust character. Left footer, wide towards the outer wing. It was intended for Jones. Chopped off by Graham. Bulldogs on the rebound. Gilmore normally uses it long and well. Two bounces, 70 metres out. Long towards the goal square. Claremont had the numbers. Mitch Thornton has the fist and will have a boundary throw. What sort of a game has Jamie Graham played this afternoon? Yeah, he's been outstanding as well down there. Look, the thing is, Anthony Jones feels only 185 centimetres and uh, Jamie's 195. So it just makes that much difference when poor old AJ's got to sit and wait for a footy. It's just tailor-made for a defender. Boundary throw in Quinn to Delaney. The hand pass finds Trent Carroll. Emerges from the defensive 50, goes with a long kick looking for Jones again. Once more, Graham the master in the air, putting his hand up for a Simpson medal. Goes into the centre square, finds McGrath, perhaps the main contender for the medal at the moment. The hand pass to Moore, uh, to uh, Cornell, who's done his job. That kick oh. was a missed kick, but it landed with Eugle. Things really rolling for South Medal at the moment. Eugle into the pocket, over the head of Hayden North. He'll be met solidly down there by Turvey and North, committed himself and with his momentum took the ball over the line and out of bounds. He uh, looks a little bit older than he actually is, doesn't he, Hayden? He's only 21, and uh, he's had a very good to season. say that he can't go to the next level. Quinn palms it down to Delaney, tried to break through, was taken in a tackle. The umpire, well, this is where the fight was just a short time ago, and the umpire right on the scene, just sorting things out immediately. Phil Evan Hewitt... Uh, sitting in the background there, he's ready to go back on, he's given a thumbs up to the coach, so he's uh, he wants to get back out there. Well, that's a good sign for South Fremantle, high up, Kyle Hams tackled without it, he's going to get the free. So well, what a, what a great, those split decisions, wasn't it? Yeah, what a great rise for the two boys, the twins, Kyle and Ashton Phil, that have come up from... was the high tackle, yeah. yeah that have come up from Boddington, and uh, Kyle's playing in game number 17, Ashton game number 20, and... Uh, together as a pair of 19-year-olds uh, may very well play in their first premiership together in 35 minutes' time. Well, the margin is 32 points. An accurate kick here from Kyle Hams would see the margin beyond six goals. And we are deep in the third quarter. Kyle Hams, the left foot up from in the left pocket. He likes it. Straight through the middle. The margin is over six goals now. In actual fact... It goes to 38 points, South Fremantle 13-14 and Clermont 6-8. Well, it's just uh, hard luck when you get free kicks. The intensity of the game, nobody willingly or deliberately gives away free kicks like that, but just in the heat of battle, sometimes you get them a little bit high. Sometimes the umpire's in the right spot, sometimes he's in the wrong spot, and he was in the right spot and duly awarded a free kick which is uh, hard for Claremont to take, but great for South Fremantle in this lead, Phil. I would think it's going to be very, very difficult for Claremont to get back now. Evan Hewitt there, waiting to come back onto the ground. Quinn backs himself, then hand passes towards Carroll. He gives it off by hand to the skipper. Crabb has got a player free in Matson on the northern wing. Taps it up, does so a second time before gathering. Now, kicks straight into the oncoming Ashton Hands. Another neutral ball. I don't mind having a little bit of a giggle out there, the two boys. It was just great pressure. They just sort of 50-50 and made Tommy Matson really make a decision. Yep. And then he couldn't make a decision. In the end, he kicked it into the oncoming traffic. 
Quinn and Cornell. Cornell has kicked three goals up forward. Chance in there for Morton. Look away hand pass to Delaney. A high left footer towards half forward. Crawford down there in front to Pua Manda Mary. At the back, Matson gathers the bouncing ball. In fact, it's Handley. The ball held to him. We'll have a ball up. Beyond the 29th minute of the third term. See to Pua Manda Mary slipping across in front of the pack. I think he even got a fist on it in the end. Crab, clean possession. Now free kick off the ball. Quinn was being retarded in his attempt to go for the ruck knock and he's got the free kick. Miles Quinn, the reigning best and fairest for Claremont, also won it back in 2002. And passes off to Morton. Mitch Morton, a measured kick intended for Anthony Jones from behind, not able to take it. And an opportunity in there for Gilmore. Hand passes away, running out of defence here with the bounces. Duffield gets towards the wing. Hand passes off to Gilmore again, looping it over the head of McGrath. Coming out there is uh, Warren, strong use of the body. The ball spills towards Morton, who chips it out wide. Quinn, and they maintain possession with the mark below our broadcast position from Carlin. So Troy Carlin driving Claremont inside 50 to a one-on-one. -on -one. Graham again putting a fist into it. This time he was opposed to Crawford to Pure Band and Mary with a hand pass in front of Clint Jones who gathers it and sends the ball to the southern side of the ground. And why not? Hayden North, he's been in brilliant touch. Takes the mark, cuts back in board to Gilmore who's really getting amongst the possessions now. And that was not intentional. The ball knocked out of his grasp by Robbie Swift. Gilmore between the centre of the ground and centre wing sends it out wide, further still, and it's been marked by Ryan Webb. 38 points to the margin. South from Mandela going to go into three-quarter time with a very handy lead. That kick forward has been marked by Tuvi. Brilliant. In fact, it's Trent Carroll, I beg your pardon. It was a great overhead effort. Leo's looking there for Quinn, brought to the ground by Kyle Hams. What a great solo effort. Hams and Quinn wrestling for it. Cornell goes in as well, and the umpire will ball it up. Well, that was a statement made when Kyle Hams went up and foiled the efforts of Miles Quinn to take what should have been a certain mark, Doro. Well, he sure did. It was a great, courageous effort, again, fighting outside of his weight division. Quinn, whoops, and goal taken in the tackle. It was high, but the umpire is going to let that one go. It wasn't goal, to beg your pardon. Again, it was Ashton Hams. <laughs> it's always uh, the byplay that goes on. Those smiling, you never had the multicoloured mouth guards in our day, Phil. Just lucky to have one. Tooby, Warren, Quinn, Morton, a hurried kick, and Trent Carroll not paid the mark as the siren goes. It is three-quarter time in the 2005 Grand Final and South Fremantle lead by 38 points at the final change. It's a convincing lead, 13 goals for 82 to the Tigers 6-8-44.